The world of Parasport is more than medals and accolades. Join hosts Greg Westlake and Travis Morrow as they delve deeper and examine the important issues impacting sport. This is Beyond the Field. Thanks for joining us. I'm Greg Westlake. Today we look at recruitment and grassroots support in the Parasport world. Later in the show, Travis speaks with Sonia Gaudet about the important role peer support plays in getting newly injured people active again. But first, I speak with the legend, Archie Allison. Archie is a mainstay at Variety Village, a center in Toronto that helps people with disabilities develop a healthy lifestyle through physical activity. Since joining their team in 1984, Archie has worked tirelessly to expose children to the power of adaptive sport. Archie, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, Greg. Great to be here. As you know, I got my start in Parasport at Variety Village. I understand the enormous impact it has on so many kids' lives. Why do you think it's so important for kids with disabilities to get involved in sport and to feel supported in whatever path they choose? Uh, well, I've been at Variety for 38 years and I've met a lot of people like yourself who got their start at Variety and tried sport for the first time. And I really think that it creates a, a social environment a physical environment where you can really kind of be active uh, enjoy be part of something important and you can decide kind of what that means to you for a lot of our athletes they choose to be a recreational athlete and just do it to um, for the company of others in other cases we have a lot of people that want to go on to a competitive stream so we work with the athlete and with the families too to make sure that they have a place and a space where they can take part in that and then also connect cl and collaborate with our resources too. So um, I, I think it's important that we we share the expertise, we work together and we work with coaches that are going to get it to, us to the level we want to play in sport. I love it. It's all about helping everybody reach their individual goals in sport. Uh, I'm curious, in your four decades of working in this industry, have you developed a personal approach? Uh, yeah, I have kind of a philosophy. It's called all. <laughs> it sounds kind of funny, but it's um, ask, listen and learn. Uh, a lot of people contact me, a lot of people will come to Brady for the first time and ask to meet with me to talk about um, their interest. Some are very hesitant, uh, some are overly excited, <laughs> some are very nervous, and each one ranges with every individual. So it's really uh, asking, listening, and learning. Um, asking what they'd like to do, what they'd like to try, what they've heard about, or what they know. Uh, listening, um, actively listening though, trying not to finish a sentence before someone asks the question of something I think they should do and then learning, right? I think that in those opportunities, there's a chance to learn what someone wants to do and what they could like to do and what restrictions they've had placed against them that maybe have inhibited inhibited some of their um, their excitement around the sport. All, ask, listen, learn. I think that's great. Uh, what, what are some of the lessons that you've personally learned about developing enticing para-sports programming? I think the biggest one is to never um, limit or exceed my expectations is the big one to, to always remember that every individual is going to be an individual on an individual day, that um, there's a readiness timeline that uh, some of the people I've met sometimes two, three and five years ago, they've joined more recently because now they're ready. And it's really kind of bring yourself back to remember that that person's an individual and that we're supporting their needs and interests. Well, and one thing I really benefited from uh, while going to Variety Village was just the opportunity to try so many different sports. Is that why folks like you offer so many opportunities to get active? One of the things I've found, uh, Greg, for a lot of kids that come to Variety for the first time, they're always surprised at the number of sports that are available to them. Um, a lot of times when kids get involved, it's through a coach or someone they know saying, you should play hockey or you should swim or you should do something else. And what I find is a lot of the families are uh, kids with disabilities that come to Variety for the first time see wheelchair basketball and athletics and Taekwondo and swimming and other sports and they really kind of get excited around uh, the different opportunities. Sometimes the sport they were introduced to first and sometimes it creates an avenue where they look at another sport and think hey I'd like to try that too. So it's really one of those places where you can see and feel and be part of a number of sport activities and a lot of our coaches are also kind of actively recruiting to get more people involved as well so there's a constant kind of uh, interest from our coaches saying i want you on our team i want you on our team and uh, looking at the different options through uh, seasons and sessions and thinking winter sport and summer sport and different opportunities for everybody so it's a great place to be to learn about what's out there and it's a great place to kind of showcase some of the things that maybe you haven't had um, an opportunity to see before it really is a great way to attract as many people as possible. 
Now, one question I get all the time, and I only have 17 years of experience to draw on, is what changes have I seen over that time? You have almost 40 years of experience, so what changes have you seen? What I really enjoy watching is um, more representation, more involvement by people with disabilities, introducing opportunities for people with disabilities. Um, I also find that in the coaching field as well, that more coaches um, have been prior athletes or prior participants in programs. And when you get people with lived experience and with that expertise of being um, on an international stage or a competitive stage that I myself have not been part of, but you have, you really kind of get people excited around that learning phase of what would it feel like and what will it be like and what can I expect and who should I talk to about it? And, and for someone like you, Greg, for someone starting in uh, paradise hockey or sledge hockey when they're starting out, to meet someone like you really kind of sets that tone of, of understanding and excitement and motivation. Yeah, I, d I definitely think the grassroots programming benefits from having Paralympians visit and be a part of the programming. Uh, and now drawing on your vast experience, uh, you created a course at the college and university level. What have you noticed in your 25 years of teaching about adaptive sport? What always amazed me is the number of people that have had limited to no exposure to sport or parasport. And when people are getting introduced the first time, there's some hesitation and some questions and some concerns. And through the classes, what I get most excited about is watching how passionate people get about it and how engaged the students become and how they start to identify with, this is important, this is unique. And suddenly they recognize that I know people that this would be beneficial for, or I know people that would be excited to, to be part of this. And I find that typically kind of through the, the classes, you can kind of feel momentum changing. And where that's exciting is you think prior to this class in the feedback that we get, they didn't really think of parasport or Special Olympics or other sports as a sport opportunity. They didn't really recognize that there were opportunities for people with disabilities to compete or play or even participate. And through kind of the, the duration of the classes, they leave with that built up momentum. They want to make change. They want to recruit. They want to advance um, opportunities for people with disabilities to be involved. So I'm also excited when you see that learning happen and when you see that aha moment where they say, Oh yeah, like I want people with disabilities to be involved. I want people in my programs. I want that person to be part of my team. So, so yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting to watch and, and be part of. Archie, I love that. Your, your students are truly lucky to have you. Your positive energy is contagious. And from athletes at the Paralympic level to kids just starting at the grassroots level who want to make friends and gain confidence, you've impacted so many lives. I just want to say thank you so much for all the work you do. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, Greg, and thank you for all you do. More to come on Beyond the Field. This is Beyond the Field. Welcome back. I'm Travis Morale, and today we're talking about recruitment and grassroots development in the parasport world. Before the break, Greg spoke with Archie Allison to learn about his philosophy for engaging kids with sport. And now I'm joined by Sonia Godet to discuss the important role peer support plays in getting newly injured people active again. Sonia's three gold medals make her the world's most decorated Paralympic curler, but it's her experience on both sides of peer support that make her the perfect guest for this conversation. So nice to have you on and thank you for doing this, Sonia. Thanks, Travis. I'm super happy to be here for sure. And we're happy to have you. To start, can you take me back to when you were first injured and kind of tell me about the role peer support played in helping you after your injury? It was crucial that I reach out to others who knew what I was struggling with and being able to see that their life carried on and how they managed it and how they functioned allowed me to set that bar and set a goal, you know, that I knew that I could achieve. So it, it really was um, the number one support system for me uh, after the injury. It sounds like you were quite active before your accident. What role did sports and an active lifestyle play in your recovery? Um, yeah, I, I was quite active, very active beforehand. So my first concern was my family and my second concern was, hey, what am I still gonna be able to do? So really, um, that's where I, I went right away was, am I gonna be able to do all those activities and sports that I wanted to do before? So um, it played, played a huge role. Sport showed me that 
I still can be involved, I still can be myself, still can do the things I want to do. I would do it differently, but I would still be able to um, fully participate and, and not be that person who couldn't participate, which isn't me. Sport showed me that, and so did the, my fellow para-athletes showed me that right away. That's a great answer. So were you familiar with curling before your accident or was that something that you discovered after? Yeah, so no, curl. I was familiar with curling, of course, um, from a, a spectator point of view, but it wasn't a sport that I played before at all. I was invited down to the local curling club to help with the wheelchair washroom renovation. They uh, got me out onto the ice and got me throwing some rocks. Then one thing led to the other and um, and yeah, we, we know where that went. Um, so it was the washroom reno, a simple washroom reno. Wow. Yeah, had turned, uh, had took on a life of its own and ended up in gold medals and lots of memories and lots of amazing experiences that I will never forget and that I still long for. So I'm grateful for those women for pushing me. Wow, I feel like we should display a plaque or some pictures or medals or something in that bathroom, you know, let people know that it's a pretty special bathroom that you use. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when did you realize curling was the sport for you and why? So probably once we started forming provincial teams and, and connecting with my fellow athletes and getting that whole team connection again and again, still really um, uh, gaining a lot of peer support for my team's teammates and, and, and continually learning how to live with my disability and my injury. It just all came together that it was just a perfect fit. And I started realizing, hey, I can take this sport to that competitive level that I always love to be at. That's amazing. I mean, I got to say, I felt the exact same way once I integrated into the wheelchair rugby team. I just learned so much about living with a disability and so many life hacks that really helped me out. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So now that you're on the other side of things and you're that mentor providing support for newly injured people, how do you use sport in that process? I certainly encourage newly injured people to uh, try the different adaptive sports that may be connected to what they were doing before, but I always introduce and you know show what all the opportunities are because you're not only connecting them to sport you're connecting them to all those athletes um, that have you know been there done that they've figured out how to manage their situation and so while you're enjoying a sport you're actually rehabbing and recovering at the same time that's the crazy thing about parasport you're not just introduced to a new sport you're introduced to a, basically a community of mentors who can draw upon their own experience in a chair to guide you along the process. It's, uh, it's a pretty amazing thing. It, it is. It's very amazing. It's very powerful, for sure. Big time. Sport naturally connects people to the peers that they're wanting to connect with. So, yeah, I, I can't emphasize enough the power of peer support and the power of reconnecting with an old sport or a new sport that you love to do before and realizing that um, you know I get to still be who I am regardless of my injury and my wheelchair and my injury doesn't define me and sport and peer support has such an important role in that process. I think that's a really great message. Um, I mean I know for me uh, it really changed my life. I was really fortunate to have two great mentors and you know they let me know right away that you were an athlete before your accident and you're going to be an athlete after your accident it's just going to be a matter of uh figuring out how to do it and you know i just i can't imagine where i would be if uh if i didn't receive that message specifically being as young as i was so i think it's fantastic that you're you found a way to give back to the community being a mentor for new newly injured athletes i think it's so important sonia so thank you so much for coming on Thanks, Travis. It was great. It was lovely to meet you as well. Stay tuned for more Beyond the Field. You're watching 
Beyond the Field. Welcome back. I'm Greg Westling. And as always, at this point in the show, I'm joined by my co-host, Travis Morrell. Today, Travis and I are exploring the importance of recruitment and grassroots support for athletes of all ages. Now, Travis, you mentioned it earlier when talking to Sonia, but I'd like to hear more about your experience with peer support and how it's impacted your career. I think I was very fortunate in that I had two great mentors when I first broke my neck. Uh, Duncan Campbell, the inventor of wheelchair rugby, and uh, Richard Peter, a wheelchair basketball player, where they really showed me that I was an athlete before my accident and I could be an athlete after. And especially with Bear, he showed me that path to high performance athletics where he showed me what it took to reach the highest level and, and that you know, it was possible for me. So I think they both played a huge role in my, in my rehabilitation and my, and my journey through sport and definitely my introduction to it. Now, now, Greg, you referenced in your interview with Archie Allison that uh, you got your start in parasport at Variety Village. I just wonder what that introduction was like and the role Variety Village played in your, in your sport journey. Well, Variety Village was huge because it, it's just such a great place where, you know, not everyone's lucky enough to have a Richard Peter come visit them right after an accident. Sometimes you've got to go find that peer support. And so for me, going to Variety Village, I was able to try a bunch of different sports, whether that was swimming, wheelchair, basketball, all these things that, you know, I didn't necessarily grow up playing. And, and what's great about Variety Village is you have access to the coaches, the equipment, but also you're rubbing shoulders with some really high level athletes. And it was really neat for me to meet a Par Paralympian or somebody who's a gold medalist at the Paralympics. And I took so much out of that. So I'm just curious, you know, as high performance athletes, you know, how can we support the grassroots system? I think, as high performance athletes, we play a huge and crucial role in, in para-athlete recruitment and development where, especially because a lot of us aren't centralized, so we're out in our regional training groups and we are really kind of the role models for, for young athletes coming up, showing them what it takes to take it to the next level and the attitude and the work ethic and, you know, all of those things uh, play a role in getting those next group of athletes to that next level. So. I think it's really important for us to, to take a leadership position in those situations. What do you think, Greg? Like, what's your, your regional training group like? Well, it, it, you know, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head when you said non-centralized. You know, we don't get to be around 18 of our teammates every week. So sometimes that one or two person network, that's all you have. And so for me, it's on the high performance side, cultivating those relationships and, and really being there for each other. On the grassroots side, you know, as we know, and Archie talked about it in our interview, the first experience is crucial. You know, that's where kids decide if they want to keep going or not, if they have a positive first experience. So for me, when I'm out there with, with kids or, or young people in general, I just want to have fun. I just want to show them the fun side of sports. And then from there, if they want to pursue their goal of being a Paralympian, a high level athlete, that's up to them. But, you know, I think it's just about having fun. You know, I'd love to hear about your first experience, you know, finding wheelchair rugby. You know what, I have to say, my first experience with wheelchair rugby was a little intimidating where I came in and I didn't know anybody. Uh, they were all older guys. They were all banging around. And it really helped that I had a couple teammates reach out and welcome me to the team, show me the ropes, take the time to teach me some life hacks, just getting around in day-to-day -day life where it really made me feel welcome. and. I think it's important that we continue that legacy and keep young athletes having fun and feeling welcome and included. And, you know, I'm, it's great to hear that it doesn't, it extends beyond wheelchair rugby into other para sports. Well, and when you mentioned the life hacks part where, you know, do you feel like there's a special connection between para athletes where you almost kind of bond through the disability first and then get into the sport second? Oh man, you couldn't be more right with that where you know, you'll always have a special connection with that teammate who maybe first show you how to get your wheelchair into the car or how to tie your shoes quicker or cut up a steak quicker. So I think that's a definite added level of bonding within teammates within parasports. And that's kind of unique and kind of special in our sport. Have you found that in, in sledge hockey? Do you guys have some tricks that you guys pass along to new guys? A little bit, you know, we have such a wide range of, uh, of disabilities in our sport. And so for me, like I, I was always a hockey player, but I had no clue about like how to set up my sled. And so for me, it was just picking guys' brains and, and figuring out, 
you know, the little things I can do on my sled to make sure I can turn quicker and skate faster. And, and then the sport becomes fun, right? Because when you go out and Archie talked about it, you know, in his whole philosophy of ask, listen, and learn, which is just, you got to tailor every program to the person. And so for me, it was sled, but for somebody else, it might be the rules of the game. But once you make that experience great and you listen and get the feedback, you know, now you've got that person hooked for life. Definitely something to think about, but unfortunately, we're out of time for today. Thanks for joining us today. And if you'd like to see more Beyond the Field, please join us at AMI.ca and on the AMI app. Hosts, Travis Morrell, Greg Westlake. Producer, Ted Cooper. Associate producer, Alex Smythe. Videographer, Matthew McGurk. Editors, Manuel Grados Andrade, Matthew McGurk. Integrated Described Video Specialist, Ron Rickford. Audio Post, Mike Monson. Graphics, Mike Smith. Senior Producer, Michelle Dudas. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media Inc.